Hi, it's Larry Herb, Xboxes, Major Nelson. Welcome to the show. I'm really excited this week. We have not one, not two, <laughs> but three co-hosts. That's right. You probably know Jeff, of course, and Rebecca, who recently joined us, but Rebecca has with us today, Pumba. Say hello to Pumba. <laughs> How's he he's doing? A, he's having a slow morning. <laughs> well, yeah, for those people that listen to the show, go back and listen to the show last week, and you'll tell it's been, you can find out why it's been a pretty traumatic week for the little guy there so <laughs> he had a very routine uh, procedure I, I think, he's healing well he's i think we're weeks away from jason ronald in this square and pumba over here or, <laughs> over on, on your side rebecca yeah. rebecca will be like you'll be on vacation and pumba will just be sitting there <laughs> yeah, and that will be the yeah. evolution of the show we're getting there we're, we're, we're yeah it's gonna that's be all not a bad on. idea actually the good news, I spent some time fixing the uh, the lower third, so now they're all under the right uh, name. So that's good. Uh, so good to see you guys. Very good. I was getting a lot, a lot of retweets last week because they thought I was Major Nelson. It happened all. <laughs> I owe you for my improving my social standing. My speaking clout. Speaking of that, speaking of that, I don't know, I, Jeff. I know you texted that. Um, a couple things, uh, a couple of housekeeping things while we're before we get going into what we're playing in the news. Rebecca, I don't know if you saw this, but uh, I now follow you on Twitter, which is, I, I don't want to make a big deal out of it. I did deal. see that. Um, so <laughs> Finally. You made a big deal of it, Larry. Uh, okay. Mm. Um, oh, well, thank you. But so, I want to point out no. also that I have- You've arrived. You can see in the lower corner there, that little, that little thing is spaces. I now have spaces on my Twitter. So Jeff and I oh. were kind of talking about mm -hmm. that on Twitter. We should, we should do a spaces sometime, which, which I don't know if you're, are you following what spaces are? Rebecca, mm -mm. it's essentially no. Twitter's version of Clubhouse. So we can do a live, basically this without the, you know, a podcast without, you know, it's A, it's live and B. It's without having to see us, which is, that's, the, you know. that's really smart. That's yeah. a good move on their part. Yeah. So we, we sh I'm going to, I'm going to fire it up this, I may do it. You know what? I may do it, uh, you know, sometime during the day just for a ha ha's for like 15 minutes to see what it's like. But anyway, so if you're following me on Twitter or following uh, Jeff or Rebecca, then you may, you may see that pop up in your feed. Feel free to drop in and, you know, say hi to myself and Jeff and or Rebecca. Spend more Perry. time talking. Are, ha -ha's, you guys. <laughs> are, are they like the polite version of lols? You, you don't do it for the lols because that has like a negative connotation. You're doing it for the ha-ha's. Ha -ha you know, you're making it happen. Mm. Whew, hey, should we, should we talk about what we're playing and kind of get into the news this week and how things are going? Yeah. Wow. It's your show. I, can, I can feel the excitement in, in <laughs> Sorry. I feel the excitement. I'm looking at Pumba and and he I'm I know he's like calming Pumbaa. me down. Do you want, you, I'm gonna you, I'm gonna put him down. Say goodbye. While you do that, I'm gonna go ahead. So you can kind of see what I'm playing up here. I mean we, we, we Jeff and I played some second extinction. We have not played all three of us yet. You can see right here. Right here, Doom. Jeff, Rebecca. You're still playing Doom Eternal. <laughs> it is, it is so, eternal for you. It is so hard. It is so it is like <laughs> ridiculously hard uh but okay excuse me i tried to play second extinction with you guys we're not online so i played it by myself and i got very freaked out by the raptors attacking me so now i'm not really sure <laughs> i want to come back into it so are you are you afraid of dinosaurs um yeah so that might like date me a little bit but i was young enough when jurassic park came out that the raptors really really scared me sure, um they, 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 and they, so that, that's fair no, the reason I ask is because um, a friend of ours who I work with, uh, you know, Ryan Trite, who handles all of our, um, you know, uh, yeah. inside Xbox stuff, he is deathly afraid of dinosaurs. And we were on a team okay. call. Okay, that were makes on a, me feel better. It's true. It was just he and I on a team's <laughs> call. And I brought up, I said, hey. So I go over and I'm like, hey, you know, we were talking about some stuff. And then I went, hey, let's play some Second Extinction. I brought it up. He saw that and he said bye and hung up on me. Like, did he just completely peace out? <laughs> wow. Okay. So I didn't realize was, uh, this was a common thing. I thought, okay. But I told him, I said, hey. As fears go, being afraid of dinosaurs is a pretty good one because it would, they would literally have to come back to life for you to have to confront your fear. Right. Like, if you're afraid of like uh, spiders, like, there's spiders in this house. Like my kid is like incredibly like screams at it. Sometimes you'll hear a blood curdling scream and you're like, ah, oh, it's a spider. Uh, <laughs> if if I guess if 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 you screamed and then I would have to worry there's a raptor in the house, but that's relatively <laughs> unlikely. Like up there with being struck by lightning twice. Yeah. 
but I mean, at, at this age, yeah. But in in the game, it was it, I don't know because they like it. It was a little bit more intense than I was expecting. Like not not too bad. Like I've played you know Call of Duty Zombies. You know things attack you. It's normal, but um, yeah, they like they move pretty fast. They move in big packs, so it's it's, it's a challenge. It's good. Yeah, they can work the door handles. I mean, you know. Clever girl, clever girl. Exactly. So apparently, yeah, so they can talk to Chris Pratt too. <laughs> it was, uh, and he can, but he can talk to them, so it works both ways. So I apologize, so, Rebecca, that you yeah. that we didn't get a chance to play because it was, uh, you know, it was. Um, I don't, I don't know where we were. Where were we, Jeff? I mean, we we did not play at well, all. We did the week. drop in. We didn't do the missions. So there, there's two. Th there's like more mission style where you have to do a few things and you get airlifted out. Then there's just sort of like the open world. Uh, where you can drop in and there's some like sort of optional things you can do where you can collect materials and level up and things like that. And then you can extract whenever you're, whenever you want to. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, it's pretty enjoyable. The, the gunplay feels, you know, reasonably tight and, uh, it's we were playing in a, a safe area so the areas are sort of rated as like they're relatively safe you'll mostly just face different kinds of raptors versus like the red areas where you might face like a mutant t-rex or something like that i'm so, actually bummed we never yeah we were in the safe area we never saw a t-rex yeah scare the pants off of me yeah and i think if we were playing you know with a full with a full team of leveled up folks then yeah i think that that we could we could definitely take on the t-rex so I, I would definitely like to do it we just haven't had a chance second extinction on the screen here uh that is available in it's in game preview but it's in game pass so there's no excuse to to unless unless you're you know gonna have nightmares with dinosaurs there's no excuse not to play it <laughs> And the rare game preview game with achievements. So we were getting in there. We got the one where right. a raptor sort of hitches a ride on the escape, uh, you know, the escape shuttle, yeah. which is worth uh, a so precious did, thirty game. Rebecca, did you just rant, play with a bunch of randos, or how did you how did you play the game? No, I just dropped into the campaign, so it was just me playing by myself, and I was playing as uh, Jurgen. So because I I really enjoy sniping, and especially with raptors, I'm like, stay away from me. Let me shoot you from distance. But right. they became up close and personal anyway so well, video, it's basically no scoping them not fun the video you shared with us was a little disturbing because you were playing the game and you know with with the with the controller we've got rumble and uh pumba was sitting there on your couch and he was not <laughs> having any of it he did not like that did yeah he? yeah i tried out the i can't remember his name but it's like the heavy artillery um mm -hmm character uh with the the machine gun or the chain the chain gun i don't know yeah. what you call that and the rumble was really gun, intense maybe. and i don't know yeah um <laughs> but the puma had been sitting on my lap and then the controller was rumbling so much that he jumped to the other side of the couch and he's kind of like what is that oh, and <laughs> my mom yeah well i never yeah <laughs> so. yeah he didn't bite the controller or anything it's fine that's good that's good uh, as that happened in no, the but past then, uh it, no but he he's more of a he likes to run away from things rather than nibble on them um so it's all good but anyway so after that i actually yeah i switched over and I, I tried something new um so i played this game called carrion i don't know if you guys have tried it but it's a um a, yeah it was pretty cool it on game uh, pass? it's very dark yes it on game pass what's it called um carrion c-a-r-r-i-o-n um so you're playing as a some kind of like a monster specimen oh, and look at this. yeah this, this. it's kind of got like it's got like old school graphics i know it was kind of a weird pivot and then after this i was like i need to play minecraft this has been a very dark evening um yeah. but this one was cool like you you basically are trying to escape from a facility you're a monster um you're just kind of like you're kind of like a lot of like tentacles and legs and you're trying to like bumble through and you're so killing the so scientists yeah no no, uh, no, no, no 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 not a shooter a platform it's like a platformer and you kind of like Got use it. your tentacles to grab people and open open hatches and you squeeze oh, wait a minute. through so vents you're playing, you're playing the creature yeah oh, they're kind of like the gross monster more. from the end of inside um you remember if you mm -hmm. recall that uh mm -hmm. that gross yes amalgamation <laughs> of stuff and uh or kind of like the monster maybe in season three of uh stranger things kind of it's like here's right. a bunch of just like flesh and but but okay. you're that so you can identify with it and anyway, you know I'm what sorry. is kind did of you... i don't know if it's sorry go ahead did, did you play this or did you finish it or how, how yeah. far did you get in it uh, i 
I played it. I didn't finish it. I'm not really sure how far I got. Um, I evolved a couple times. I grew in size. I looked like I completed a couple levels, but like I said, it was it was late at night. I was home alone, so I went and so, so started building a new so house in Minecraft instead. You. That didn't scare you, but the dinosaurs did. Okay. I can't explain it, Larry. Larry, <laughs> you'd be a terrible psychologist or psychiatrist. It's just <laughs> like know. making fun of people's fears. Oh, no, I'm not making fun. I'm just trying to understand. That's all. Just let's let's bring it all around. I okay. can't explain you know what? it. Never. But we've talked about you know, our when... fears before, yes. and I'm curious <laughs> about Larry's fears because I'm fear. I don't like open ocean or being like in water, and um and and Rebecca, you're afraid of uh, things from 65 million years ago. So, Larry, what are you afraid of? Uh, well, we open about up clowns. to the audience. We talked about clowns. Clowns. That's right. That's right. <laughs> oh, um, I thought that was kind of a joke when I didn't realize people were actually. Sorry, yeah. no offense. Right. Yeah, clowns. And and the joke that the, the worst part of it is Rebecca. And I don't know if you know this, but there was a brief micro milli second where I tried out to be in clown school. <laughs> wow. The more you know. Um, so it was, I'll have to find that there's an article in the paper about when I, this was when I was in high school. Uh, and it was, thank Goodness. God I didn't do that. I'll just say that it was, uh, <laughs> uh cl clowns scare me. Um, heights have a little bit on me, Jeff. Like, remember when you and I went to the top of the, uh, the one world center, that was a little, I was like peeking over. The oh, side. in New York. Was that, yeah. uh, yeah. the, was that one world trade? Yeah. yeah. That, that was cool though. Yeah, that, it was that's very cool, an amazing like, place to like, go. Yeah. Kind of. Looking at the end, and then that's oh, great. for sure. Other than that, I mean, I just, I don't, I guess I really don't have, you know, the, it, I will say when I go, do, do you, I don't know if we talked about this, Rebecca, do you scuba dive? Cause I scuba dive and Jeff doesn't. Mm -hmm. You do. Okay. Yeah. So, you know what it's like when you're down there and I'm like 100 feet down, and sometimes I just get this panic attack where I'm looking up and I see my bubbles going up and I'm like, that's a long way up. I'm down here. It, it just, it, it, I have these moments of clarity where I'm like, uh oh. So. <laughs> well, my, my other big fear is actually sharks. Uh, so anytime I've ever gone snuba diving or snorkeling, I always find myself looking over my shoulder like, is there something coming? <laughs> I'm really uh, yeah. scared of sharks. And so then, and that's when I, when I, I remember on one of my dives, my open water dives, where the dive master, you know, does this, points over there. <laughs> that means it's shark. And I was like, oh, wow, that's a cool shark. And then there's, I'm in the water with the shark. It's his home. I'm dead. And it was, it was a nurse shark. And the thing turned around and I'm pretty sure the water all around me went yellow for a second. So <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so that's, so, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not afraid of, uh, I'm afraid of a few things. We all have our things. Okay. So. That's yeah. good. You're human after all, Larry. <laughs> One of us. Aww. I don't even know what that means. Uh, anyway, so we're talking about what we're playing. Jeff, what do you, do you have anything else, Rebecca, before we move on to Jeff? Um, no, go ahead. Jeffrey. Yeah. So uh, I've been staying up late the all week, uh, playing some late night outriders and actually completed the the campaign last night. It with? Uh, I've been playing with Will, the uh, okay. the uh, editor in chief of Xbox Wire, Will Tuttle. He is a power player. He is uh, world tier 15. He, he is he's just maxing out everything. He's got full legendary armor. And uh, so he he carried me pretty significantly, uh, which may have taken us yeah uh i i really enjoy the game uh especially the uh i've got a good build so there's there's a uh there's a couple of youtubers out there who are doing like great build youtube's uh yeah. youtube uh tutorials and so uh i'm a trickster and so i have a trickster build and after i rebuilt my character um according to what this youtuber uh had uh, you can literally just go into the search box and put in outriders uh character builds or trickster builds or whatever your class is he's done them uh two i think tew two play something like that uh all of a sudden i was like whoa this is like night and day and so once you start using your galaxy brain and not just the moves that look cool and string these things together you can start doing amazing stuff and then the next stage after that is is playing with another couple of people who have complementary skills so there's skills that if you know they can ash your characters where they get sort of uh, the enemies where they get coated in ash and someone can cause extra damage to an ashed character or there's right. an, a couple of different combinations like that then you can just do really cool stuff but you get later in the game it starts raining purples and so you start getting those and you figure out which ones to break down and what what's cool about it is you can pull you're a little less 
beholden to the RNG and you can like pull abilities out of a uh, an item you like and you can put it into a different one and then you can level it up and stick with the one. I have a gun that every time I shoot someone, lightning comes down and strikes them and that does not get old. I can promise you. That's just really cool. Yeah. So awesome. Uh, yeah. I actually so that, downloaded now, Outriders because you've been talking about it. Well, if you ever yeah. want to run with it, uh, we're, we're definitely down to that. It's just like between that and Second Extinction and obviously things dinosaurs? like Destiny. I don't remember any dinosaurs in there, Jeff. Are we going to be okay with uh, <laughs> There's sort of like gross versions of dinosaurs when it uh, – yeah, very much so actually. Gross versions. Uh, there's some big, big old beasties. And okay. so – and the story was kind of cool and I like my creator characters. So yeah, in general, Outriders, awesome. Uh, I think it's nice. – you know, it's been great having it on Game Pass and that's taken up my time. That and Dragon Quest, which I think – I'm finally about to beat it for real this time. So, uh, again, I can't say enough good things about it, uh, but uh, I've expounded upon it in, in many episodes uh, previously. So we'll leave it at that. Excellent yeah. game. Good stuff. Yeah, we've got, uh, we've got a bunch of news we're going to go over. We'll do that after the show. We've got some interviews today, um, and this is actually really exciting because uh, we've got an interview, Jeff, that you did with, uh, with Mac, right, about uh, Mass Effect. Yeah, Mac from Bioware. Uh, he was someone who actually joined us at PAX East a long time ago yeah. uh, to talk about uh, Andromeda, I want to say. Events, and we used to have 500 people in a room. It was glorious. <laughs> yeah, so he's the the project director for Mass Effect uh, Legendary, uh, the, uh, the collection, the Legendary Edition, where it's Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3 and a bunch of other stuff. So so we'll be talking to him and, and diving into – it was just – cool just thinking about mass effect again and just how impactful it had been to you know so many of us and, and i know there's a lot of questions out there about this but we will get the answer to what about elevators jeff will get jeff asked that question stay tuned we'll get to that in a minute and then uh rebecca we we, we kind of keying off your shirt right there we're gonna we're gonna interview some <laughs> fuck, folks about um about uh, a really exciting uh, asians at xbox event or the what's, what's specifically the name of the month what does it remind me yeah, so it's it's a bit of a mouthful. It's Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Um, and so at Xbox, we have an employee resource group called the Asians at Xbox. Guess what it's about? Um, but we have our two co-leads, Michael and Irene, and they're really incredible people. And they're doing a lot of good work to bring the community together internally and externally. Um, we have an awesome Xbox Wire post all about how Xbox is supporting um, AAPIHM. <laughs> Um, so there's a lot of cool stuff going on, a lot of, a lot of opportunities for people to get involved. Um, May is also Mental Health Awareness Month. And so uh, for both of these uh, kind of moments in time, um, Xbox has some way that people can get involved. So we have a collection of entertainment and games that spotlight characters and stories um, kind of around these you know, groups of people and issues. And uh, we also have opportunities for people to donate through Microsoft Rewards, which Microsoft will match. Um, and rewards are awesome because we're not asking people to pull money out of their own pocket. It's, you know, you can earn rewards through using Bing or you know, playing games on Xbox and other Microsoft properties, and then you can donate those points directly to um, organizations that are making a change. So I would encourage everyone to check it out. And yeah, I, I hope that you guys like my first interview. Yeah, so we'll do that. Um, I think we'll probably get into that right now. We'll start with Jeff. We'll go into Rebecca. And then on the other side, we'll do the news. Think back, if you will, to the Xbox 360 era. It was a great era for gaming. One of the best. Now, what games come to mind? Halo? I need to say that. Gears of War? Oh. Great choice, Mass Effect. Yes, experiencing the original Mass Effect trilogy series is it's one of those shared common experiences that many of us gamers have, arguing over you know which Shep is the best Shep. It's Fem Shep. Uh, maybe finding out that you could beat the boss of Mass Effect 1 without firing a shot. That kind of blew my mind and I completely replayed. Uh, maybe making jokes like, I'm Commander Shepard and this is my favorite podcast on the citadel we love mass effect and now nearly a decade after mass effect 3 shipped with a whole generation in between we get to relive these experiences perhaps for the first time uh or maybe again uh for for those who loved it the uh you know back in the xbox 360 days so uh very happy to be joining us uh mac walters the project director of bioware joining us from edmonton alberta uh has the snow melted yet mac 
it it it's melted for now but you can't count it out until like may long weekend it could it could come back at any moment <laughs> that's like with us in the rain here in seattle it's like it peaks of summer but it's not summer till july yeah, yeah. so uh yeah. well you joined us back at, at pax uh east a few years back it's it's great to yep. see you again and here you're talking to us about mass effect legendary edition it's out next week so let's talk that's about right. this package uh, of, of course it's the the three uh mass effect one two and three but but what else is in in this and what have you done with uh these games yeah i know it's it's uh, i'm you know pardon the pun a massive amount of content we've got all three games plus uh you know uh over 40 dlc uh sadly the pinnacle station could not be resurrected but uh so many of the fan favorites whether it's layer of the shadow broker or leviathan um all of that single player dlc plus um you know of course wrapping it all together and you know it is a remaster but it was more than that as well of course with mass effect one you know we really wanted to uh sort of uplift it to feel a little bit more connected um in the experience to two and three um the, you know that was our first foray into the universe our first foray on the on that platform at the time and on that engine and you know i, I think you know a lot of the the issues that we resolved in two and three and the things that we figured out what worked and what didn't work we were able to now kind of go back and really sort of improve me one and you can see here with a lot of the the footage it's not just a visual uplift although that's a big part of it you know gameplay in mass effect one was a another big focus for us as well yeah we're looking at this trailer with a lot of before and afters here yeah. and, and i noticed uh, you know a couple of things that sort of stand up to me one is well thane here Thane skin. Yeah. You can see just a dramatic upgrade. It is interesting though, looking at some of the befores. I was like, actually before, <laughs> this game holds up really well, especially Mass Effect uh, 2 and 3. So which yeah. elements do you think have, have shown up the best, uh, you know, and really had that biggest jump uh, with this, this remaster? Well, for sure, the, the characters and environments in Mass Effect 1 are going to, you're going to see the biggest sort of jump and improvement there. Uh, but honestly, just across the board, I think characters in general are going to, you know, you always strive for that believable character. And, uh, you know, adding things in like SSS and improved AO and the characters, it just helps flesh them out and ground them in the universe a little bit more and more consistently as well as you go through. And you can see here everything from, you know, improving, improving the textures, but a lot of the shader work that we've gone into improving, you know, just the, you know, the surface response on skin and the way the eyes appear improvements to, you know, not just the hair themselves. We did a lot of work there, but actually adding in new options. Um, and then when you wrap it all together, this is showing, you know, the cinematics. And I think, uh, you know, this was always presented as a cinematic universe, right? You were you were playing a movie. And so being able to really hone in on a lot of those things like the depth of field um, and just the general sort of tone mapping um, throughout the throughout the games, it really helps them to sort of uh, really shine in that cinematic uh, experience. Yeah, I think it's really interesting when you I'm glad you put the split screens in there because there's always that thing where what a game looked like back then and then what you think it looked like and then you look yeah. back and you're like oh wait it didn't live up there and when you do yeah. these remasters correctly yeah. it looks like how you how you think it looked it seems to usually that's be a the really bar. that's a really good point we we, we kind of recognize that right from day one we said look you know, we're not just remastering assets we're remastering people's nostalgia and their memories right like you have to think about what is their memory of it like and in a lot of cases you know, they don't remember what Mass Effect 1 looked like. It, at best, they're kind of remembering the last touch point, which is, for most people, Mass Effect 3, if they've played it before, right? So they have that in their mind, and they're thinking, oh, yeah, like, that's that's how I remember it. And um, honestly, the biggest, I would say the biggest hurdle and sort of, um, you know, thing that sort of hit us on a day-to-day -day of, of decision-making was really about where do you improve and where do you go? No, this is this is actually the way people remember it. We've got to be really careful how we tread here. You know, a great example in my mind is the characters. We talked about that. You can take assets that obviously look much better in Mass Effect 3. Let's say Liara, she just came up on screen there, and bring her down into two, and she's going to instantly look better. But she's not going to look like Liara in Mass Effect 1, right? She's going to look like Liara in Mass Effect 3. And she had a story arc. She progressed throughout the course of the games. Mm -hmm. 
and intentionally looked a little older, a little wiser, a little less naive in three. So we had to make sure that, yes, you want the fidelity boost in Mass Effect 1, but you want, you know, the character likeness to stay consistent in there. You know, we want Liara to still look like Liara in Mass Effect 1. So we spent a lot of time of making those kind of decisions and um, how to improve without, you know, having someone play it and go, oh, wait, this isn't how I remember it. That said, we should all age as slowly as as Liara does. That would be, <laughs> yeah, that would be sure. quite the quite the feat. Uh, so you mentioned yeah. Pinnacle Station not being able to be rescued. And I thought that was an interesting story. Like yeah. you know, you had to go in and look, and you know, I guess maybe you know things. You could t talk about that if you like. But it, just in general, I've I've heard stories during remastering. Like uh, I remember the State of Decay team remastering for Year One Survival Edition, and uh, there were certain textures that you know when they were rendered on the 360, it was you know it just didn't. They show up how they show up at the time, yep. but as the remastering process happens, it, you you find sort of like hidden gems or inside jokes yeah. or, or things that that now show up yeah. in the HD era, 4K era. So, uh, was there yeah. anything like that that jumped out at you? Where like, oh man, I didn't know we did that. Yeah, um, well, you, you know, a lot of the the sort of writing uh, that you'll see, like, so everyone remembers the sort of Robo Dogs from Mass Effect Two and Three. Um, they actually say, I think, RoboDog on them, but you couldn't really see it in the original um, unless, you know, somebody had modded it or done something to it. Now that was like plain as day. You, could, you can kind of see that right, right on the texture of the, of the, of the uh, robot, right? Um, and then, yeah, uh, as far as interesting anecdotes, you know, one thing we don't actually talk about a lot are the cinematics. And when we were, you know, going through this, there are, I think, at least five different just types of cinematics that we have in the game. So we have like sort of live in in game rendered real time uh, cinematics. We have ones that were rendered in game, but then you know recorded as video. Uh, then we have uh, other larger ones that sometimes used uh, aspects of the engine, but a lot of times we took them outside for compositing and and touched them up. And I remember you know a good example of this is you know the the big space battle end sequence in Mass Effect One, right? So we had the ability to kind of re render those out with all you know so. Remastering's done, we've upraised the individual assets in the engine. And we had this ability to sort of, okay, let's let's try to just render those scenes out again. And they just never looked right. The lighting was off, the effects were missing. There's always some element of it. And that's partly part of the, you know, the way we would have done it in the past. And so what we ended up doing was taking a combination of the uh, video upraised to 4K, right? Like so beautifully upraised, but still it's a video upraised to 4K so that you're going to notice some flaws in there. But we actually were able to mask in certain elements like the Normandy or, or uh, uh, Sovereign or something like that. And then uh, recomposite it all with new VFX so that the scenes themselves look incredible and remastered. But actually it's this this interesting combination of a 4K video that uh, has been upraised plus all these amazing 4K assets that were sort of masked in over top. And, uh, you know, I think for for us, a lot of it was you had to look at, it wasn't, I think a lot of people think it's just like, oh yeah, click a button, remaster, go. Um, every type of asset you have has a different path to getting remastered the way you want. And um, like I said, even with the you know cinematics, I think we had five different pipelines for, for different types of uh, cinematics in there. It's not just hitting the remaster button, hitting that, yeah, that right. up res button, is it? It's a lot more complicated, that's right. right? Yeah, oh, yeah. So these yeah. games were, were released over a course of a, about a five-year period. Mass Effect 1, I think, was 2007, and, and yep. Mass Effect 3 in, in 2012. Uh, and the later games were, you know, more modern as, you know, yep. a lot of things evolve over, over time. Uh, but these are all going to be consumed theoretically at, at once, uh, you know, yeah. here in, in, in the year 2021. So I, I, I you kind of slightly talked about it, but how did, how did you address sort of, um, you know, keeping the, the experience consistent, uh, especially with Mass Effect 1 into the later ones? Yeah, you know, uh, uh, we kind of took it in stages. So the first stage was really sort of twofold. One, let's get these things working, all three games, uh, up and running, you know, with, you know, DX11 and and 64-bit, uh, but then also make sure it's on the modern consoles. Simultaneously, we are uprising, you know, doing the uprise thing on all the assets so that you can bring all that together and then assess, okay? And then because it's until you get in there and play it and see it, it's like, okay, well, what what is the delta still between Mass Effect 1 and 2 and 3? And that's where we realize it's like, yeah, even with all of that, Mass Effect 1 still feels like it's it's really lagging um gameplay wise um you know just the smoothness of cameras things like that 
Um, and even just the visuals in the environment, very sparse, um, just because of, you know, the nature of how we built it. And so that's when we really sort of said, okay, how, what are the things we could do to, again, keep it like you remember it, um, but also sort of raise that experience up so that it, uh, when you go from, you know, Mass Effect 1 and 2 in a Legendary Edition, it definitely feels like there's a progression. It definitely feels like, oh, this is fresh and new, um, but it doesn't, it's not jarring, right? And I think that was probably, you know, the goal there was to reduce that delta between the two games uh, and acknowledge though, but still there is a progression. And I think that's what's really like me playing through it, what I really enjoy now is you, you know, these are big games. They take a long time to go yeah. through, especially if you're a completionist like me. So when you finish one and you go to two, the fact that there's these differences, both visual and gameplay wise is, is nice. It's like, it's like, Oh great. This is act two now. And, and now everything's kind of freshened up a little bit, uh, but still feels very contiguous to my experience, which is great. So I think that's, what's great about it is it, it doesn't, you know, it, it really feels like one whole piece, but it also, you do get that sort of benefit of the evolution over time. Yeah, which is a interesting, you mm -hmm. know, sort of, uh, you know, s iconic thing about games is that, you know, they evolve over yeah. time. It's not just the storytelling mm -hmm. evolves, but just everything from interface and uh, yep. controls and all these different things. So, uh, look, let's talk about elevators. All right. So in the original <laughs> yep. game, all those years ago, there were long elevator rides covering up uh, loading times. Well, you know, it's 2021. A lot of people are going to be yep. playing on Xbox Series S and X with uh, SSDs. So yeah. um, do you still need the elevator rides? But there's conversations that happen on there. How, how did you how did you handle that? Yeah. You know, uh, again, going back to what I said before, what we did was once we got it sort of just playable, on modern hardware, it was interesting to see just how much we improved without necessarily having to specifically do anything um, to improve those experiences. We found that, a lot, again, a lot of times, uh, load times are just improved, but then we were able to dial it in even more for the elevator specifically and the ones where we, uh, the ones that were really egregious, especially in Mass Effect 1. Um, yeah, you, you made a good point, which is originally we had all these conversations in there, which of course were designed to kind of hide the fact that you're stuck in a loading tunnel all this time. But then, you know, the writers did such a great job of those conversations that they became kind of endearing to a lot of fans, right? So you don't want to remove that. So what we said was, okay, well, the simplest solution is here. As soon as you can get out, you will let you skip it. But if you don't want to skip it, you don't have to. And of course, like you said, yeah, on a, a modern hardware SSD, you can rip through those those uh, elevator moments pretty quick if you really want to, or just linger and hang out with your your buddies if you want to. It's cool to give the option. I, I, I love that. Totally. So, uh, yeah. There was a lot of content here. I think there was, I read 40 pieces of DLC across all the different games. Yeah. Uh, you know, personally, I was a huge fan, and this is not exactly a controversial opinion of Lair of the Shadow Broker. I'm just curious, mm. uh, which of these stand out to you? Maybe is there a piece of DLC that didn't get its look back in the day that you think, hey, you know, now with the the benefit of hindsight and playing the remaster, yeah. uh, this, this this legendary edition, um, you should really, you should go for this. Yeah, you know, I, I think the the great thing is that you'll have the opportunity to try them on. I think a lot of cases, you know, you, you, some people are kind of all or nothing. You know, if there's DLC, they're going to buy it, period, full stop. I think the majority of people maybe buy one, maybe buy two, they haven't tried all of them. And now they're going to have the opportunity to not only go in and, and try each of them on their, at their own sort of pace as they want to do it, but also see where and how they interact. Um, so kind of seeing what they, they missed out on before, which is great. Um, I think project overlord, it was a great one that, that, uh, you know, it was one of the first ones we did for Mass Effect 2. And, and uh, there's some really, you know, if you like choice and also just sort of uh, like kind of a kind of a haunted ghost in the machine vibe. Uh, it was a really cool uh, a DLC back in the day. And I, I, I don't know, uh, Leviathan's fun too, although that I think I would say that was probably already a fan favorite. But uh, yeah, yeah, there's so many, there's so many great things in there. And, you know, when you look at a lot of the uh, you know, the sort of packs and, and kits that we gave out, a lot of them in the past would have been exclusives, right? So it was very difficult for you to collect them all because you had to, you know, purchase in a certain location or something like that. And now they're available to, all of those are available to you. We had to scatter them out throughout the games for purchase. Otherwise, you know, for the first six months when we kind of got things up and running, it was just, every, all, all, everybody would just run around with all of those weapons and, and armors because it was just, you were su super overpowered. But yeah. um, uh, now we've sort of spaced it out because you have something else to chase, you know, for the loot. 
Very cool. So uh, you've got a week now because uh, Mass Effect yeah. uh, Legendary Edition comes out on May 14th. So if you're <laughs> if you're working through any other games, you're going to want to clear out a lot of time. So use this week <laughs> to, to get back yeah. on track uh, before before it drops. So uh, Mac Walters, thank you so much for joining us from BioWare. And uh, we are looking forward to reliving these experiences again, perhaps for the first time. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. I'm really excited today to be joined by Michael and Irene, our Asians at Xbox Employee Resource Group community leads. I've seen a flurry of emails in the last like month or so getting ready for Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month from them. And there's just been a lot of exciting things that have been happening across the company, both internally and externally. So thank you to both of you for joining us today. Really great to have you on the show. Um, if you don't mind, I'd love to just get to know you a little bit. Do you mind us sharing, um, you know, I know that you're both obviously the Asians at Xbox co-leads, but if you could just share a little bit more background around, around what you do for work, um, just would love to get to know you a little more. Yeah, for sure. Irene, uh, you want sure. to go first? Uh, yeah, I'll go, I'll go first. Uh, so I'm a UX designer um, and I work at 343 and um, on workflows and tools. And um, I also focus on um, improving, creating uh, better tools and better workflows across many disciplines, such as animation, live ops, and infrastructure, audio. And I'm a co lead at uh, Asians at Xbox with Michael. And um, yeah. Hey, hey team, I'm, my name is Michael Fu. I'm a program manager at, at Xbox. Um, I'm a super lucky kid from Seattle. I spent a whole career working on Xbox in one way or another. Done uh, games, uh, infrastructure type work um, on Xbox Live. Currently, I'm working on uh, our PC business. I think I know Xbox, we've not been the biggest uh, investor in the PC space because um, we, we've been focused on console. But uh, you know, we got Game Pass, and it's exciting to, to pay subscription to get 100 games on PC. and uh, we partnered with with EA uh, to get EA Play, and we want to do more in the PC space for sure. That's what I'm currently focused on. Yeah, that's awesome. I I love meeting other people who work in gaming because you know I'm I'm kind of in my own like little Minecraft world, but it's great to meet people across the org who are on different teams because it's just such a big variety of what people are doing at Xbox. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just curious too. When you were growing up, just you know, we all ended up working in gaming. Were there any particular characters that you really identified with, or um, any games in particular that you know kind of inspired you to pursue your career in gaming? Michael, do you want to go first? Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I think um, my thoughts on that, I I think is less a particular character, but it's more like um, a game, like The Legend of Zelda, the original NES. Um, just as, as a kid, I think that by, by far was the, the favorite game. Like this is the old school, like you play and you try to progress as far as you can, you pass the controller to your, to your friend. So I guess less a character, but that, that game was just amazing. It's an, you know, a, a tiny little universe to, to explore. Yeah, and like for me, um, I used to play a lot of Street Fighter with my cousin when I was like five or six, and then I'd always pick Chun Li, and I thought she was pretty and she was really cool. So no matter how many I win or lose, I always pick her. So I have very fond memories of that game. Nice. Everyone knows Chun Li. She's iconic. Um, I also like. I I loved playing Tekken games growing up, and it was it was really nice. Like in fighting games, I feel like there's pretty good diversity of characters, and so you can kind of be like, oh, that one kind of looks like me. I'm gonna pick her, you know. Um, but anyway, so I was I was just curious. So if you don't mind, I'd love to just know about the start of Asians at Xbox. I mean, how did this how did this come about? Like, did the two of you find each other? Um, yeah, let me know. Yeah, for sure. I, I, I can take that one. Um, so it's actually kind yeah. of a fun story. I kind of tell a lot and often. Um, here at Microsoft, I happen to be in, on campus today. Like, uh, if you kind of stay safe or your mask, even indoors here, uh, you, you come in the office. Um, on the campus, there's one there's one single restaurant that serves beers. That's a bar. Um, like a lot of the teams, like like retirement parties happen there. Team celebrations happen there. Or you know, if you had a long week, you invite your friends and go have beers. Like not right now, but in the past. Um, so in one of these events in the past, um, G for E Gaming for Everyone. The, there's, it's, it's an organization within uh, Xbox. Like uh, we are a part of it as Asians at Xbox. The leaders were there, and the team was there. And at the time, I had been working with interns and helping like their culture 
when they come visit every summer, like I love to kind of teach them about Team Xbox, what's what's our intentions, you know, meet, have them meet the leaders, understand our goals and answers our questions. So Asians, Asians at Xbox that didn't exist. So I was like, you know, maybe a beer or two in and it's like, hey, where's Asians at Xbox? Come on team. And then they were like, nice. you know, it's not like, we're not excluding. It's just like, it, it didn't exist as a group when G3 was formed. So it, it didn't, we didn't build it. Um, Fast forward like a year or two later, like we we built it. Like we were like, hey, do we want to do this? And yeah, you know, we do want to form this this org. And and then Irene and I, like we've been doing this for a year and, and nine months or so. We're brand new. That's cool. Yeah, and yeah I, I mean, uh, and now. To... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, sorry, I was gonna say just to touch on um, how we uh, actually became the colleagues of AX. So Michael actually sent out a uh, email to WIC distribution list and I say, hey, we're trying to form this new community. If anybody is interested, you know, ping me. And I was one of the, the the few who pinged Michael, and then I was actually went like went through a interview process with a lot of people at G at the time. Uh, yeah, so that was fun. Wow, very official. I like it. And I mean, now I was just gonna say, I think the group has grown to at least at least like a hundred, two hundred people, if not more. Um, and there's been a lot of really two hundred, yeah, two hundred, two hundred. Yeah, that's something. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I guess, what kind of work have you guys been doing since then? I mean, I've, I've seen the activity lately. Um, you know, obviously, this has been a difficult year with the rise in hate crimes against Asian Americans. Um, and I've seen a lot of the work that you guys have been doing. So if you don't mind just telling us a little bit more about that. Um, yeah, sure. So in the past year, we really tried to put together a collection of events, you know, during the pandemic in the work from home environment, that is the type of event that allow folks to stay connected, but also don't require them to be constantly on the like on mode uh, to in order to join our event because a lot of our members and folks have like family responsibility they can't really stay in front of teams 24 7 right or not 24 7 but you know you get what i mean but so like the mm -hmm. event that we're trying to come up with are more like a creative and social and fun that or don't require people turning on their camera. And then um, we also, like during the, the start of the COVID, a lot of um, re Asian restaurants have been having a really tough time. So Michael and I at a time were thinking about how may we um, support the Asian community locally outside of our group and the company. So we come up with the idea of um, catering lunch quarterly for our social events and sending folks a small number of gift cards and encourage them to order more or from their local favorite Asian restaurants. And this turned out to be a activity we love to do as a community on a, a quarterly basis. And it also like feels great knowing that we're supporting and uh, contributing to something bigger than just our small group here. Um, and another thing that um, we just started doing this year is to reach out to um, Asian focused nonprofit and other Asian ERG leads uh, across different gaming and tech companies in general and um, see where we can join efforts and learn from each other. This is part of the, the initiative of like how might we figure out what action to take in a meaningful way and amplify the impact so that we can help uh, fight back the anti-Asian hate. And then um, yeah. most recently, we also hosted a panel discussion about experiences being Asian in gaming industry with lead leaders at Xbox, EA, and Activision, and the work we each do to support our community. Um, yeah, so those are just like a high level view of the work we do. Yeah, I mean, it's high level. That's a lot of that's a lot of activity. I mean, it's awesome. I, I can't thank you guys enough for fostering this community, like not just within Xbox, but then even like bringing us into the broader, you know, Asians in gaming, Asians in tech community. I mean, I think this is yeah, this has been a tough year. And so it's, it's awesome to see that kind of solidarity and people coming together. Um, what I guess I would ask, like, what are your goals for Asians at Xbox moving forward? I mean, I think you've already accomplished a lot in the last year and nine months since you got it started but i guess you know do you foresee us having like in-person events and meetups or um you know is this something you guys want to do long term hey i can i can take, take that one with, with asians at xbox yeah. um 
for for me, it's it's basically caring for for your teammates. I mean, I've been I spent an entire career here, and like I, my hope is, you know, if things play out right, I can finish my career here and then go go off and move to somewhere warm, and it'd be it'd be cool. But primarily, it's really to you know think about Team Xbox and take care of your teammates. Um, like on the you brought up the the violence in America recently. I can build on what Irene shared already. When that happens, uh, you we kind of instantly hold a meeting. Everybody comes comes to the meeting, and you know you, you share what you need to. If you're upset, you're you're angry, like just anything goes, and you listen and you you you, you know you take action after that. Uh, but it's really taking care of your team. Um, it's like creating safe spaces like that, like these rooms. Like it doesn't really need to 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 have like a big uh, American, uh, <laughs> big national issue like this. It can be like any time where you create a safe space. Safe space. It's fun. Um, old employees, new employees can come you know, meet each other. You make friends. Um, you mm -hmm. actually you think about their careers too. You think about like what can we do for the team? You know, we have we have a budget. Do we think about um, you know speaking courses for public speaking? Do we think about bringing in people to help with with your their LinkedIn? Do we bring in mentors? You know, that's that's a thing too. Um, at the end of the day, too, we're we're all working together. We got to have fun too. You know, so we have a lot of um, with Asian culture, food's really at the center of it. So when we were in person, we, we would have a lot of catered food um, over the pandemic. Like we've had to adapt. We would actually we've actually been buying DoorDash cards, like the first 50 gets a DoorDash card. So we'll hang out and everybody buys their different sushi or some other Asian restaurant thing. And they'll share it, share it on the on the call. Um, so the long term is just, you know, care about your team. And take care of them, and you know, let's let's you know, work together at Team Xbox, and let's try to win. Yeah, I love that. I I feel like, especially in the last couple of years, I've seen a big increase um, in, I guess, the effort to make our workspaces more inclusive. Because you know, we can we can hire anyone, but then we have to make this be an environment where people feel welcome and they want to stay and they want to keep working with us. And so it's, it's awesome that you guys are doing, doing so much to contribute to that. So thank you. Um, I guess my last question would just be, you know, given that this is May, Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month, quite a mouthful, but it's, a, it's an important month. Um, I guess I'd just love to know, like, how do you recommend that people observe or celebrate this month in particular? Um, my thoughts on that, um, is, so this year is actually the very first time for us to celebrate um, API Heritage Month at such scale, which I'm super stoked about. Um, so we have a X, uh, Xbox Wire blog post that's summarizing the activities and all the fun stuff that we're doing. If you haven't checked that out already, I, I encourage you to take a look at that and then see if there are any events that you're interested in. It's a great starting point for us to stand start to, start to understand each other and uh, even within the API community, there are so many different types of cultures and traditions. So it's great for us internally to start building that uh, mostly as well. So yeah, so in, if you have anything that's like, you know, like uh, in your area of interest, definitely go, go ahead and check that out. Awesome. Michael, All right, well, I think that? that's our time. Oh yeah, Michael, anything oh, to add? No, I'm all good. Yeah, you, you covered it well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you both so much for joining us. Um, this has been a great conversation, and uh, I'm sure we'll have you again on the show soon if you're down to come back. Yeah, for sure. Let's play some games. Thank you so much for inviting us. <laughs> All right, great job, Rebecca. Your your first interview. Uh, you know, you're you're officially part of the show now. Actually, almost officially part of the show. And uh, let's talk about your audio because we've we've seen some great comments <laughs> oh, yeah. from everybody. That like people have been very welcoming. So thanks to all of you yeah, who have you. welcomed Rebecca to the show. The the only thing that we've seen sort of uh, that require uh, that needs improvement is audio, and I, and that's something you're working on, right? Yeah, so I have ordered a new setup. It should be here in the next like week or two, I hope. Um, next week, I'm actually going to be on vacation. But then the week after that, I'm hoping that I'll be up and up to par with these guys. So <laughs> thank so you for will... all the feedback so far, though. Yeah, you can see Jeff has his mic. I've got mine. We're going to get you a nice high end uh, podcast radio mic as well. It's 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 been ordered since day one, but there's just been back ordered. So we'll get you. We're going to get your audio much better. So thank you in the YouTube comments for all your kind words. <laughs> 
Yeah. I, I will say this, you know, there's, there's sort of this trope, uh, which is don't read the comments. Right. And we do read the <laughs> comments and the comments are generally incredibly nice or like constructive. And we want the constructive. We don't just want like, we love the show. I mean, that's, that's great. I and mean, thank you. Uh, but also when there's like advice or we'd like to talk, we'd love for you to talk about this topic or these people or whatever it is, that's super helpful. And so thanks so much for being like just a great community uh, is, is I guess what I'd say. And also again, for, for welcoming Rebecca to the show. Yeah, that also yeah, is seriously. We, we also, uh, we had a question actually in the YouTube comments and some people hit me up on Twitter about the renaming of the show. And, you know, this is originally it was Major Nelson Radio, which just kind of rolled off my tongue in 2004 or five when I came up with the show. We just wanted to be more inclusive. So it's Xbox. It's not my show. It's your show. It's Jeff and Rebecca and everybody that listens and all of our guests. So that's why we renamed it. It's the same show, same people, you know, just a little bit more fun, a little bit more of that. In fact, Jeff and I were, I don't know if you saw the, uh, the, the email, um, Rebecca, but Jeff and I were looking at some of the um, some of the the numbers for the podcast on Spotify and Apple and Google, and apparently we're we're big in Poland. Very large. In <laughs> we're the number three gaming podcast in Poland, yeah. which I'm, uh, I mean, that, I wish that, I knew yeah. how to say something in Polish to thank and them. I, but... I know, but <laughs> embarrassingly, I'm half Polish, and all the words I know are not fit for the podcast, so I'm going to just let it go with that. Um, well, look, we, we're talking about Outriders all the time, and so you know that that must have been that must have been part of it. And uh, you know, I think we've had actually a few Polish devs uh, on on yeah, the show recently. The so, so yeah, for sense. the medium. Yeah. By the way, so we're number we ten in video games in Saudi Arabia. Just look at oh. some of the numbers here. Cool. But anyway, oh, yeah, you can you can hit us up. In fact, uh, a lot of folks had asked about. We I went through and kind of for lack of a better term, plunged out the pipeline of all the names. So you should see all the new names on Spotify and Google and Apple Pod or wherever you do, whatever your podcatcher is, um, you should see you should see the new name there and a bunch of fresh new metadata. It's got Rebecca's name. So yeah, we just kind of did a little spring cleaning and touching up, but uh, we're, 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 you know, the same feed, it's the same everything. The only thing that's different is, you know, obviously for the past year we've been on YouTube um, and then everything else is pretty much exactly the same. So that's that's kind of the reason for the evolution of the name is just to, to it's not about me. It's about everybody else and it's about everything Xbox. So that's that's what's going on there. Now you can't take your ball and go home, Larry. I, <laughs> I don't want to. I, what I want to do is I want to get where somebody else. Remember back in the day, Jeff, we used to have you, know, you or maybe you or Laura host the show when I wasn't there. Um, I want to kind of have maybe someday when I'm on vacation, you guys can host the show. Yeah. Yeah, that would require you going on vacation, which you probably yeah, should do and say. you never do. You <laughs> never take a break. I do. I do need to take a break. So we'll, we'll figure that out. Um, okay. Anyway, you got some news coming up, Jeff. You got a couple things there. And uh, actually, I want to, before we do that, uh, Rebecca, again, great job on the interview. There was a couple things in the interview that she and I were talking about afterwards. And uh, there were some questions about um, some of the, some of the guests uh, were using like our th standard three letter acronyms, Jeff, like a UX designer or, or UXD, you know, Rebecca, I want to see if you can maybe pull back the curtain on what a couple of those things they said were. Do you remember? Yeah, um, Microsoft is notorious for our acronyms, seriously. Um, so let's see, a couple things. So UX, that's user experience, yep. right? That's like a yeah. UI, that's um, a person who designs like, you know, the UI in a game and things like that. So that's right. Why, Larry, Which for you three just four. answered an acronym with an acronym. <laughs> UX, is that UI? Yeah, good point. Thanks, Larry. Yeah. Um, but UX at 343, that is super cool. Um, I love the Halo loading screens and the menus and everything. Like, it's, it's awesome. Um, and then another one was WIG, which is Women in Gaming. And right. so we we have a lot of ERGs, which are employee resource groups. I, I think I actually spelled that yeah. one out. Um, yeah, and so WIG is Women in Gaming. And so it's just an open invite for all the women across Xbox to join and kind of have our own little community there too, which is really awesome. Uh, I think I think those were the last ones, if right? If you missed one, drop it in the comments below, and we'll be yeah. sure either Rebecca we can or, translate. or Jeff will come in and try to demystify the three-letter acronyms. So yes, uh, it's it's not TMI to you know to thank you thank clarify you. that. All right, well, oh, Jeff, anyways, you, you got a little, couple things there, and then I think Rebecca. You yeah, yeah, about. yeah. Sure. Well, I mean, you know, the the. The good old Melissa McGame Pass. She constantly gives us something to talk about, something to look forward to, and ensures that we never clear out our, our gaming backlog. So uh, some new games were announced this week uh, coming to Xbox Game Pass. Uh, today, or by the time you, you hear this, you'll be able to play Dragon Quest Builders 2. We talked about that for a bit. Um, also, FIFA 21. And 
you yeah. know, as we know, the sports games, FIFA, Madden, uh, NHL, um, they, they usually end up on EA Play, uh, you know, usually a couple of months after uh, launch. Well, the biggest sports game of them all, FIFA, FIFA 21, it's out now. We're getting late into the European soccer or football season, but MLS is just kicking off. Sounders are undefeated. And so, yes, great. Always a great time to play to play soccer. Outlast 2 is also available on cloud console and PC. And Steep, which, uh, you know, I, I don't think I got to snowboard at all this year because of pandemic and stuff like that. But really fun game, uh, sort of a somewhere in the slightly more realistic uh, realm of, uh, it's not quite SSX craziness, but at the same time, really fun and kind of like an open world uh, with real mountains around the world. So I really enjoyed Steep uh, from Ubisoft and that's available now on cloud and console with Xbox Game Pass. And then coming up next week, Final Fantasy, I always call it Final Fantasy X, but it's Final Fantasy X, it's Final Fantasy X uh, and Final <laughs> Fantasy X2 uh, with Titus and Yuna. Yuna, I think maybe she, wait. Now I got it. I can't remember. I'm mixing up all my Final Fantasies because she might have been Final Fantasy VIII. Anyways, uh, those are available. The remasters of those. And and Final Fantasy X is one of the best ones ever. Uh, so I uh, highly recommend that. I never finished X2. Just Cause 4 Reloaded, available on May 13th. Um, and that is... Um, sort of, you know, Just Cause 4, which is like a crazy explosive game, but then even more things uh, added to it, um, like the Death Stalker Scorpion muscle car. Um, and then uh, the original Psychonauts. Nice. So, we, right. So Psychonauts 2 is coming out uh, uh, later this year, which, as we've talked about, but Psychonauts, uh, the original one will be available digitally uh, and part of Xbox Game Pass on May 13th. And so if you've never played the original, I've never played the original from OG Xbox. This is your chance to do it. And uh, last one here, last two, actually Red Dead Online. So uh, that is uh, just the online component of Red Dead Redemption 2. Did we ever uh, will be that? available for Xbox Game Pass. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and of course, in any uh, Rockstar online experience, it continues to evolve for years and years yeah. and years. Obviously, GTA Online is still... I mean, close to a, a decade later, still super huge. And then Remnant from the Ashes, which is a really interesting game. It's coming to PC. This is a uh, third-person shooter. It's kind of like a... Uh, hmm, I want to do it justice. Uh, it, very challenging, uh, kind of a Dark Souls. If Dark Souls was a shooter, is I guess... I don't want to say the Dark Souls of shooters. It's a cliche. Yeah, but it really has a lot in common with it. Like, if you die, you got to go back and get your stuff and stuff like that. So, uh, really interesting. We're checking out. And uh, so, that's coming to PC. And a few DLC game updates, like Fallout from Fallout 76. Um, Gears Tactics, Grounded. Uh, there's a big update. Minecraft. Uh, you get a free RT, R2-D2 beanie uh with with that and uh sea of thieves um as well has a as an update uh through uh game pass available until june 22nd you check it all out minecraft, on Jeffrey? xbox Y. <laughs> in fact i did and there's a couple bits of minecraft news and one bit i've been waiting for personally uh evolves minecraft dungeons rebecca tell us about that <laughs> yeah so minecraft dungeons uh, now has cloud saves um, and so cloud saves, for those of you who aren't familiar, um, another term for it could be cross-platform cross saves. And so basically, you know, you're playing on your Switch on the go, you hit save, and now when you get home, you boot it up on your Xbox or your PlayStation, um, you can pick up your progress. And this is something the community has been asking for for a long time, but it's really hard <laughs> to enable, yeah. honestly. And so that's why it's taken a while, but we're really happy to have it out now. And um, yeah, we hope that people get to take advantage of can it. Can you remind people what platforms minecraft is on because it's on like every i think it's on my refrigerator i mean it's everywhere right <laughs> well so for dungeons we're available on playstation oh wait no not playstation 5 sorry playstation 4 um xbox one xbox series x and s nintendo switch windows pc and then minecraft itself i can't list all of them because yeah. it's i think the list is like 21 long but it is <laughs> basically every single thing that will play a video game will probably run minecraft <laughs> I'll have to dust off my Atari Lynx. Yeah. Think about that, Jeff. Think about that. Did you have a Lynx? 
Uh, I had a link. I love my links, and my wife loved it too. She used to play clacks all the time. Click, 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 click. That was a great, uh, great puzzle game. I think it would chew through batteries well, that, that, so that, fast. That, that's, that's that amazing. and the Game Gear, which I had neither. But uh, oh my god, it would just destroy batteries. Uh, last bit of update here: Watch Dogs Legion. Know you're a huge fan, Larry. New yeah. DLC and yeah. title update 4.0. There's basically new uh, new things you can do, new types of citizens that you can um, engage with, like a, a DJ, uh, a first responder. Um, let's see. There's some new abilities uh, that you'll that will show up, like pickpocket and uh, second wind. Anyway, uh, just more and more uh, Londoners to interact with in in uh, Legion, and more activities to do as well. And of course, the, the title update stuff is is of course free. Uh, and then there's more DLC as well, uh, especially on online. And so there's uh, some new uh, solo assignments that you'll be able to do with that. I have a little bit of news. Uh, do, do you, Larry? Um, well, we, you know, it's it's granted it's a few days old, and it's kind of just an add-on. And that was earlier this week, um, depending upon when you're listening to this. But I think it was May third. We announced uh, we added over seventy more titles that are getting FPS boosted on Xbox Series X and S. So if you want to yes. you want to swing over to my blog there and check that out, um, see it's majornelson.com forward slash FPS boost. We had some more. We had some earlier, but we just added a whole bunch more that are, you can see some of them go up to 120 frames a second on Xbox Series X and or S. Um, so you can have the whole list over there. And that's a big deal. If you've played some of these games uh, before, you you know may go check the list and maybe your favorite game is on and kind of enjoy it at a, at a higher frame rate. Right, Jeff? Yeah, there's some great stuff on there. Um, and we were talking about it like like we're we're big Far Cry fans okay. and like we beat uh you know, we played Far Cry five mostly together and uh and that's all on there. About and out in, the, uh, out in that barnyard with the cow. Should we, I guess we shouldn't talk about We've that. talked about that in the past. <laughs> we talked about like uh getting all the crazy achievements, punching a cow. Uh but I never played New Dawn and now like I'm all the more uh, you know, it moves up the list because now it's doubled in frame rate and just smoothing that out. Another one's Yakuza 6, which I haven't gotten to yet. And it's really cool knowing games? that when I do get to it. What? Have you ever played any of those games? I think you'd like them. Yeah, are you Believe a Yakuza fan? Believe it or not, fan? I've dabbled. I've dabbled a little bit. An and, uh, you know, what <laughs> happens. Uh, uh, actually, there's one other thing I want to talk about, and I'm just curious how you're feeling about it. Uh, well, so there's a Resident Evil Village has a demo available now. Um, I saw it actually on the dash. I saw uh, uh, I think Lady Dimitrescu uh, beckoning you to download. And uh, I'm, I'm like, I'm sort of torn because I'm scared to play it. Like I, I, I played Resident Evil. I played most of them. Um, I think all of them but six. And uh, I'm used to the third person. I loved RE2 and 3 remakes, which came out in the last uh, year and two years. Uh, really good. Scary, but third person. Resident Evil 7, I couldn't do. It was first person. There's stuff behind you. Uh, freaked the hell out of me. Yeah, that was, um, but now okay, I want to go me. back. That, that scares me. You yes. About that. <laughs> yeah. That scares me. But RE8 looks so good. It just looks so interesting that I really want to play it. But I also know I'm like complete chicken. So I'm like I'm like fighting with myself. Do I, do I just jump into that one and see how I, I like it? Or In the middle of the I day. Seven? Yeah. In the middle of the day with the volume down with the brightness <laughs> turned all the way up. I actually read an article about like how to make RE7 like less scary. And, <laughs> and it was like all those things. It was like play with the volume really low, turn the brightness all the way up in game, not where it tells you to do it. Right. Play during the day, right. um, play with other people. I did that with Second background. Extinction. <laughs> Pumba was there for supporting you. Uh, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> getting back to the FPS boost, there's a whole bunch of titles on there. Untitled Goose Game at 120 frames a second. That's what you want to see. Tell you. Okay. Uh, but yeah, there's a whole bunch of there. So go FPS boost, check it out. And what's cool is you don't even have to download anything differently. Um, but what you want to do is is when you go through management, because some of them default to not having it on. And so you'll want to actually go into like the, you can manage the game and you can turn it on just like you would do with HDR, uh, yeah. auto HDR. And there's a little video and you can say, okay, I want it. on my blog post that shows you exactly how to do it. You can just go, here's what I do. Perfect. So that's all you need to do. Perfect. There's even a new section actually for the Xbox Game Pass games that support FPS boost. So you're like, oh, I want to check out something that is now, I got my 
120 hertz, you know, LG TV or Samsung TV, uh, what you can do is uh, on your dash, when you hit down, um, there's a Xbox Game Pass. There's like that green you square. You can back? click on that. And then you can go down yeah. within that. Actually, you could, why don't you do it, Larry? Yeah, so that, there you go. Hit A there my, my on that Game Pass to turn it back part. On. No worries. There we go. And then if you go down, your, your camera angle is like not ideal. You'll see a section that says FPS boost. You actually went all the way to the bottom. I don't think it's that far down. <laughs> Hold on. There it is. That was it. That was it. Yeah. Uh, tur turn your camera. Tilt it slightly to the left. Oh, there, there we go. Games with FPS boost. And that's really cool to go through. And there's a lot of them. And so if you've got Game Pass, I mean, oh my God, there's a lot of them. Golf so, with friends at 120 frames. That's a very popular <laughs> Thank game. Thank you very much. Yeah. I'll have it. Oh, I've played that one. Yeah, thanks. I would like to see Ooh, that one actually, at 120 frames. I'm looking at that and Mirror's Edge, Mirror's Edge uh, Catalyst at 60 will look real nice. Right, right. That'll be a good one. Yeah. Anyway, so that's some of the news this week. Thank you for any other news there, Jeff, before we uh, let you go and let you leave the news desk. I, I got my break coming up. We're, uh, we're, we're going to be uh, next week. Uh, we're going to do something a little different. I know, Rebecca, you are speaking of vacation slash holidays. You're not going to be here next week. So we'll, we'll, mm -hmm. we'll, I've asked. I'm having trouble negotiating with Pumbaa's agent. So Pumbaa was trying to <laughs> fill in, but I don't think we're, we've reached agreement. <laughs> Um, but we'll have, uh, Jeff and I are working on bringing somebody else in here as a little surprise guest. So stay tuned on that. So that'll be next week. But, uh, I want to, I think we're going to wrap up now. We've talked a lot. Oh boy. We covered a lot of ground today, didn't we? For, for a quiet mm -hmm. week in the news space, Jeff. I know. <laughs> it's never a quiet week. Yeah, that's true. That's true. We got a lot of bunch, bunch of stuff coming up. Um, so we'll wrap up now. We'll let you guys go. We're recording this as, as Jeff and I always like to say now, Rebecca, you know, we record this right around lunch and we're all, all of our tummies are collectively grumbling a little bit. Um, so we're going to let you, everybody go. We'll be back next week. Remember, Jeff, tell people how they can find us uh, or how they leave their feedback, please. Exactly. Well, we love comments, uh, especially on YouTube seems to be the easiest place. So do like subscribe, ring that bell, put some comments in there. And we love to read them. Uh, we respond wherever we can usually over the weekend. Uh, but we do appreciate your ratings, especially on Apple podcasts, but Spotify, Stitcher, SoundCloud, wherever else uh, you are consuming this content. That sounds very reductive, but uh, <laughs> it is what it is. And also make sure you follow Consume us. On Twitter. us. We're going to do we're going to do Twitter Spaces sometime within the next few days. Uh, we'll see how that we're going to we're going to take that for a test run. I have no idea if it's going to go for two minutes, twenty minutes, two hours. No idea. So make sure you follow us there, and you can follow Rebecca. You saw the you saw her uh, her. Why don't you tell us what your Twitter for those that don't have the video? Tell us what the Twitter is. <laughs> Uh, it's at Rebecca, R-E-B-E-C-C-A underscore Y-E-U-N, which is Yun, my Korean name. But does anyone use underscore anymore? I said that the other day and someone was like, oh, <laughs> is that an old I, thing? Not if I can avoid it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess people do in the old days when you used to have to create ways to space things out and whatnot. But I mean, yeah. Right. I, 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 yeah, I guess so. But yeah, you could just. Give me a break. You don't have like the, the little X the one word and then version. the big X. <laughs> underscore I definitely XX, had Rebecca that back Yoon, in the day. XX, yeah. Sniper killer yeah. XX. Yoon, yeah. XX. It was it was uh Roar Becca back in like 2008 or something when that Roar was. Becca, I like That's adorable. That's the Twitter uh, yeah. account you need. Uh, thanks guys. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. All right, Probably taken though. We'll wrap it up. Rebecca, have a great week off next week. Jeff and I'll be back with a special guest. Uh Jeff, any final words or Rebecca any final words before we go? I have no wisdom well, to impart. This week was uh, National or International Star Wars Day on May 4th, and I picked up a new joke. Uh, what was it? Let's see. Uh, did you, oh, oh, shoot, hang on. Now I can't remember. It was, um, you know, the creation of the lightsaber was amazing because it's really cutting edge technology. Happy Star Wars Day. <laughs> I'm gonna okay. Need, I'm going to have to do a sad trombone sound effect. I'll see you guys later. Bye bye, everybody. <laughs> All right. Bye, guys. Thanks for, thanks for a good show.